Hopefully you can all see the slide there and it has opened it as a PowerPoint screen. Give us a shout if not. <laughs> so again, hello and welcome and thank you for attending our event. Um, we will be starting now. Please ensure that your cameras and microphones are turned off unless you are obviously speaking, which is that's absolutely fine. Um, we will use the chat function. Um, oh, one second. There we go. Let's get everyone in. We will use the chat function just for a little bit of an activity right at the beginning, just to get everyone awake and engaging. And right at the very end, sort of after this week's events, as part of the adult safeguarding um, week, you will receive a short evaluation for feedback. So please fill that out because um, it's always really useful to know that our events are received well. And if there's anything we can do to make them um, even better for you all. Please do check out the other events that are on this week. And we do have another event on Wednesday morning at the same time where we will be looking at VCSE wellbeing services and some of our partner organisations in the VCSE sector that provide emotional and mental health and wellbeing support to communities both in the East Riding but also the wider areas as well. Why it's not moving now? One second. There we go. Just going to minimise that one second. So our session today is on about is is on the safeguarding and the voluntary community or social enterprise and faith sector. So it's what do we do and what services do we provide? And as said, my name's there and my role's there. A little bit of housekeeping. We have already covered some. And um, the session will re be recorded so that we can share this. And we have done that in order to kind of put together today a resource that we can share with all services in all sectors in order for them to understand some of the work that's being carried out by a whole range of organisations across the East Riding um, that provide support both to those residents in the East Riding but also communities beyond that. We will ask you to use the chat function. Unfortunately, I will have to come out with this while I, I pick up all your messages, but I will try and do that as smoothly as possible. I normally have my colleague with me who can who can uh, monitor the chat for me, but she's not here today, but I will. we will manage. Um, we'll be emailing a short link, as already mentioned. And one thing that's really important, we always mention, is confidentiality. So we've got some incredible guest speakers and some amazing organisations here today, and they will provide a short time at the end to answer any questions. All we do ask is that if you are sharing any sort of worries, concerns or cases that you're currently working with, um, that you do avoid using any sort of names, addresses, identifying factors, etc., just to protect the confidentiality of anybody that you might be discussing. But also, we will ensure that the contact details of our guest speakers are shared um, with those. I will get in touch with those organising this week um, to make sure that they are shared with you so that you can connect separately and outside of this session if you need to. And finally, obviously, a massive one with safeguarding is to look after yourself. We've got no you know, intentions of discussing or, or showing anything that would be really traumatic. And we are really careful that we do work in a really trauma-informed way. However, as with all things safeguarding, they, they can be difficult and they can be you know, emotive topics for people. So what we do say is please look after yourself. I will stay on the end at the end for a little while just to make sure everybody gets off the session okay but if we can be of any support or you do need us to connect you with anybody that can provide that support please um please stay on at the end or reach out to me personally I'll pop my email address again if you've missed it it is in the powerpoint later down the line um and we will try and make sure that we get you some the right support should you need it so fine uh, to, to kick start us sorry aims of the workshop so firstly we we're hoping to get a bit of an understanding of what the VCSE sector is and what it looks like within the East Riding. We do predominantly stick with the East Riding, but for a lot of our organisations that do work with people beyond that in communities, so hopefully it's equally relevant to both. And if there is anything that after the session you think, oh, I wonder if there's a session like that or an organisation like that in my area and you're not from this area, please feel free again to get in touch and I will try and help you. I'm going to also look at trying to understand some of the key roles that the VCSE, that's the voluntary community and social enterprise sector, plays in safeguarding communities. 
And finally, to look at some of the organisations and what the support they provide to those living in the East Riding. So firstly, just to kind of kickstart our session, I would just like you to pop in the chat any words, phrases, and um, anything that springs to mind when you think about what the voluntary community and social enterprise and faith sector means to you. I'm conscious that there's people from all different um, sectors and roles. It'd be really interesting just to see words, phrases, etc., that spring to mind. I'm just going to quickly come out of this and stop sharing for one moment, just so I can see the chat. So please feel free. I will only take a couple of minutes just to pop some things in. Yeah, let's see what we've got here. Anything that springs to mind? Yeah, charity, religion, together, brilliant. Any others? Friendship, community, charity, collaboration. Yeah, absolutely. Protecting and supporting the community and our members. Absolutely, some really good ones. Working in partnership, huge and so important. And we will look at that as part of um, a little bit further down the line in the session. It's where the magic happens when we partnership, work and engage with one another. Any more before I uh, don't want to miss any. Some great ones there. I will try and share my screen again. Brilliant. So loads of really useful for ones there. Thank you. Please add them in the chat because I will be downloading that to keep. Um, so it's really interesting. So please keep adding them. I apologise if I've missed just missed them now coming back on. But as mentioned, um, I've not got my colleague here who normally reads the chat for me. So there we are. So what is the VCSE sector? So I went away and kind of looked at what it is in terms of a definition, you know, to recognise that some people have quite a limited knowledge of what it looks like. Um, and actually there is no single definition of the VCSE sector within UK policy. And it says this, the definition that has been subject to debate. However, there was definitely some key words and themes that kind of sprung out of the, the literature and the research. And you've mentioned some already, things like the word charities, um, public sector mutual and social enterprises, which are in the title, that societal sector, and that really um, lets you to look at what society looks like, that, that communities and bringing people together and understanding that kind of being on the ground in communities, these kind of themes was all coming out. Self-governing and independent of both formal structures of government and the profit sector. So it being more um, working in, in, uh, independently, more, um, as it said, kind of separated from them structures and the potential to use volunteers to carry out work. So there's a real theme around um, getting people sort of from the community, involved in the community, you know, and what starts maybe as a form of support for them can then become a volunteer role or other um, or even lead on to paid employment for that pe for that person. So there's some of the kind of phrases that came out of home office publications. And then another one that I thought was really useful at the bottom is the voluntary community and social enterprise sector is an important partner for health and social care agencies and makes up a significant part of the UK economy with 153,000 registered charities and 53 billion in income. And that came from the goodgovernance.org.uk website. So what does the VCSE sector look like in the East Riding? So it includes faith-based organisations and in the East Riding is a diverse group comprising of many small groups that are purely volunteer-led right through to the larger national charities that cover our local area. So it was really diverse, really vast um, and as like with most things in the East Riding, quite spread out. You know, the average on about that a thousand groups and that's within a thousand square miles. Um, so a really large sort of, much bigger than many people assume um, sector. 
The VCSE and the East Riding delivers a broad range of support and activities to people of all ages, backgrounds and needs. And it gives you a list there of some that could kind of spring to mind. So you've got your sport clubs, art groups, social clubs, single interest groups, support groups, cultural groups, as well as health and social care services. It also provides opportunities for people to volunteer, help to reduce loneliness, try new things, meet new people, improve overall health and well-being, as well as gain employability skills. So a really broad spectrum of support and resource um, within local communities. So what can the VCSE sector offer? One thing and I think is really important is that lived experience and diversity. People within them communities are always the best people and kind of the expert on what is going on in their community, what issues that they are facing, what kind of experiences have led them into a role, and also that diversity within communities where communities, particularly sort of smaller um, ethnic um, groups, tend to stick together in them communities and really understanding that diversity and that difference and that need and what they need. You've also got a lot of personal passion and drive. For many people in the VCSE sector, it has been a personal experience, either themselves or a family or a relative or a friend, that's really made them become really passionate um, and given them that drive to maybe set up a group or a charity or an organisation in order to sort of approach and, and tackle a, a subject from the perspective of really understanding the impacts that it has. Um, and we see a lot of that in the youth riding. A lot of people um, within the VCSE offer their time and resources and expertise to give something back. They may have been on the receiving end of support at one point or maybe supported by an organisation or a charity or a group um, during their time of struggle. And for them, it's that opportunity after that um, to give something back. You've got, again, that time and patience. You know, a lot of us have worked right across the sectors. And for many of us, we feel that really um, that kind of burden around like time and resource and deadline and things like that, where many people who, you know, I've worked with and are working in conjunction with within the VCSE sector say that, you know, unlike some services, I'm a, I can sit down and I can have that cup of coffee and I can see what's going on for that person because I've got that time or I've got that volunteer who is able to provide that one to one support that maybe somebody's needing that listening ear. Another thing that the VCSE sector can offer is that shared common understanding of what issues communities are facing. You know, as outsiders, we can really try to understand what's going on within a community or an area. But actually, it's those people that are living in that all the time that are always going to have that better understanding of exactly what's going on and what that community needs. And those connections right now across all of the strategic boards is that we're really understanding that we need to have that contact with those individuals to really understand so that we can target support in a way that really meets with that need. You've got trust and familiarity. You know, I always know from working right across the sectors that those who are maybe in a VCSE sector role or a volunteer role, if somebody feels that you have that understanding of them, that you are experiencing what they are going through, if you have really experienced it yourself and, and even from the perspective of um, they're approaching the work in a more sort of a friend or a volunteer role than maybe a kind of a professional coming in from an external, you've got that trust and familiarity, you've got that face that, that they recognise, you've got somebody who understands maybe a little bit about their, their context and the system that surrounds that person. So that familiarity can really give an opportunity to, to maybe get in there with some people, particularly those who we may class as maybe target and um, harder to reach. Innovation and expertise, I think one incredible thing about this sector in general is just how innovative and how quickly it can respond to a need. So rather than services being targeted because they feel like this is what they need, they can they can kind of um, respond to what they're seeing is the need. You know, and if that changes, they can then look at a new way. They can work more creatively with people in order to get in and target that support. 
Um, I've also put there about being in a unique position to support provider collaboratives. They've got that really hands-on experience. They've got them connections with that community. So there really can be that bridge to kind of bridge sort of external agencies and the community to make sure that that happens in a really smooth way. And that consistent consistency, you know, for many people that I've supported in different roles, um, the one thing that you always notice is the amount of inconsistency that they can have. And that it seems to be, you know, even more so now that we're moving to working a lot of the time online, you know, even things like your GP, if you go back some years ago, your GP would be the same GP that you would have for many years. Now you're more likely to see a, a locum doctor or somebody on there, you know, the same with the police who maybe work in a community. Now you'll see more different ones because of, you know, local smaller police stations aren't always open now that, you know, they're coming in from maybe further away now. Same with health staff, teachers, education, social workers. These staff, you know, can change a lot more. But what I always say with them, with anybody, is if you can connect them with somebody in their local community, that can be the one consistent factor for them. Um, and it can really make a difference to them having something that is consistent and stable. I put the bottom there about despite the incredible contribution that the VCSE sector makes, the sector is under incredible pressures. And I really wanted to just um, acknowledge that really as part of this session, that the sector is under an awful lot of um, kind of resource and restricted level of resource and funding and things like that. But despite all that, it remains really resilient and it's really sort of works in the most um, creative and innovative ways to really try and work with what they got and still respond in the best possible way that they can. So I just wanted to acknowledge that. So the VCSE and safeguarding. So I picked out a few little things there just to look at what kind of role the VCSE has in safeguarding and some of the things that it's doing at the moment sort of nationally. So as it says there, over 75% of VCSEs deliver public services where they are based with a lot strong links to their locality, which again is, is links very much in with what I've just said in the last slide around that really linking people, they're providing services to those around them and those that they understand and they are connected with. The place-based solutions can create a greater impact for those most in need who are harder to reach for, to the, for the traditional public sector because they tend to be based with them, because they understand it, because they have those um, evolved kind of relationships and networks already in place they are there already to kind of provide that support and put it you know and deliver it where it needs to be VCSEs contribute to the economic growth making the economy more innovative resilient and productive you know um I won't go into them now so we don't have the time but currently involved in some incredible partnership work where you know services who maybe would not normally come together are coming together and they're, they're kind of pulling shared resources and tools and skills to really maximize um outcomes for communities and yeah and i'll give our details at the end but please sign up to our bulletin so we can keep you up to date on all of those and then as it says there, they open up opportunities to ink for people to engage with the community, foster belonging and enrich lives. And they're all taken from what as mentioned there. So I'm going to now deliver the following section. My colleague Elaine as part of the Alzheimer's Society unfortunately couldn't be here today, but she was really keen to share um, some information on their organisation and the support it's offering to a whole vast of, uh, range of, of people and ages um, right across the Hull and the East Riding area. So Elaine's detail, her name is there um, and I will make sure that her details are delivered. I think they're on a further slide, but if not, as mentioned, I will make sure that as part of the um, information that you receive after the session and the evaluation, you get the, the contact details for everyone here. And Elaine is more than happy um, to hear from anybody after the session and um, to provide any support or, or details as you might need them. So as mentioned there, 
And the Alzheimer's Society is there to help and give hope for people living with dementia. And here's a little bit of an introduction for us. So some information there on who the Alzheimer's Society are. Now, the UK's leading dementia charity and work tirelessly to find new treatments and ultimately a cure for dementia. They provide expert training information and a range of different support services, which I'll look at in the following slides. Their aim is to create a more dementia-friendly society so people with the condition can live without fear and prejudice. So one of their support, uh, support services, this hallway, is as the Dementia Advisor Team. And the telephone number is there and the email address. So some of the things that they offer there is information, advice and support to living with people with dementia and family and caregivers who may be um, undertaking a caring role for somebody with dementia. They run ongoing dementia advice and support in person by phone, on Zoom, via email and also by mail. They can deliver personalised support at a time and frequency to suit the service user, which also includes home visits. They have a referral and connection to other services as well as required, because quite often there may be other needs alongside that um, of, of those relating to the dementia. They have face-to-face -face appointments at Churchview Surgery in Hedden on Thursdays. Here's some information on their activity groups. And as you can see, these are delivered each month on a face-to-face -face basis in some of the following events, in so, some of the following areas, apologies. So you've got the Hazel Town Hall on the second Thursday of the month, Bridlington Applegate Court on the last Thursday of the month, commencing 1 till 3 p.m., Beverly Minister on the last Friday of the month, Market Wheaton in the Community Hall Group on the first Thursday of the month, Preston Community Centre on the second Wednesday of the month, Willoughby Methodist Church on the second Friday of the month, Driffield Activity Group on the first Wednesday of the month, and the Ghoul Group, which runs Friday on the first Friday of the month. And again, if you've got any queries, any questions about these groups, you can ring and get more information or contact um, Elaine directly. So also as part of their organisation, they have a brain health worker, which is a 26 hour post to support people thinking about getting a diagnosis. So they work in order to support those as a as diagnosis can take some time to get to make sure that they know who they need to speak to and what services they connect with in order to really help them to identify it as soon as possible. And it works across all eight, across eight venues in the East Riding. Another service that they offer is their national telephone support line, providing information, support guidance and signposted for anyone affected by dementia. The telephone number's there and the hours that it works is also included there. And one thing that um, was really good for those who, who are or, or prefer a sort of online way and method of gaining support is their dementia talking point and it's a, a support and discussion forum for anybody affected by dementia or those caring and it's actually open 24 hours a day and moderated by staff and trained volunteers and some of the things that they can um, access the kind of support and services from the talking point is advice and tips sharing information receiving emotional support joining key discussions and live web chats on key topics and become part of a local network if they wish to. So one that really provides that kind of 24 hour support should somebody need that. That's a thank you from Elaine, a but from me. Um, and if you do have any queries, I will pop her details in the chat in a minute while the next um, guest speaker is, pre is presenting. So I will now ask Susie, if it's Susie or a colleague, um, to unmute yourself and I will um, operate the PowerPoint for you. You just tell me when you'd like me to switch slides for you. Will do. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for having us here today. Thank you for inviting us, Gemma. So my name's Susie Bowbill and I'm the Senior Family Support Organiser at Homestart Goulin District. So I'm here today with my colleague, Sophie, doing a bit of a double act. 
So I'll let her talk us through the next slide, if you would, please, Gemma. So here at Home Start, we um, support families that are struggling, and that could be for lots of things. We're a community of network of. Can you just put that on mute? So, thanks. We're a community network of um, volunteers that support our families, and we have a small um, office. Uh, I, I can't really pardon you. Okay. okay, sorry. I can just hear double whack in the background. So we've got a, a group of uh, uh, volunteers that support our families and we're there for parents when they need us the most because we say childhood can't wait. So we can support families that are um, struggling with loneliness and isolation. They've got low level mental health. Uh, they might have illness issues, they might be new to an area and need to have make, make some new um, friends and acquaintances and we can kind of introduce them to any different groups that are going on. We can support families that have got um, social services involvement and we can support families uh, that, again, not quite meeting the threshold of other services, but still crying out for some support. We can offer a little bit of a, a middle ground to support them as well. So Susie's just swapped rooms and she's going to do the next slide. So it was a, we had a bit of a feedback issue, sorry. <laughs> uh, so next slide, please. So yeah, brief history of, of Home Start. Home Start was first established in 1973 by a lady called Margaret Harrison. She believed that supporting a family was best done in the family's own home, where they were comfortable and where that support can be specifically shaped to the needs of that individual family as they're also very different. It was a basic concept. She very simply linked local parents to other local parents. And that is still pretty much the ethos and the basis of what we do today. She noted at the time that women were working more and families were no longer living necessarily terribly close to each other so when a woman had a baby it wasn't necessarily the case that her mum was next door to support or an auntie or a good friend was around the corner and on hand to help mum through those early years. When parents get support and friendship from other parents they will be better equipped to learn to cope with the many difficulties life can bring and will be able to give their families the best possible start which is ultimately our, our aim. So next one, please, Gemma. So as we said, we're, uh, we have a, a, a lots of volunteers. We recruit and train the local community members that become our volunteers. They do a 30 hour prep course, um, which covers all of the things that they need to know so they can support our families. And within our prep course, we cover the role of a volunteer, values and attitudes to make sure we're questioning so we're not um, judging the parents at all. Uh, we do listening, communication, meeting the needs of children. And then we have obviously a big section on safeguarding to ensure that they know they know what, what to look out for and how to approach the families um, with any difficult situations, which as staff, we, we generally deal with the um, safeguarding issues. Um, we do regular uh, reviews and with the family and then we have regular more regular supervision with the volunteer because although they have a friend they gain a friendship the volunteers gain a friendship with the families we regularly remind them that we are working in a professional capacity and it is really important that safeguarding is top of priority so any safeguarding issues rather than feeding them back to the family they come back to us as staff and then we deal with them so then we ensure that the friendship and the support from the actual volunteer maintains a high priority. Um, the volunteers all visit the family about once a week for a few hours, and they offer that support, friendship and practical help, which can really help families that are just so stressed that it just may, really makes a difference having someone to talk to. And then we do the reviews with the um, volunteers once a month. Okay, next slide, please. So primarily, um, we do offer the home visiting support. Um, but alongside that, we also do run some groups. So we run a group in Ghoul um, on a Tuesday morning, which is half past nine to half past 11. And this is for families. We, we call it a parent support group. Children are obviously welcome, but really it's about the parents supporting each other, talking to each other, forming those friendships and supporting each other 
through through the chaos and the stress and the joys and the fun and everything else of, of family life. So we provide tea and coffee. It's a very informal group. Um, it's more of a drop-in, really. Some mums and dads and carers will come along for the full two hours and some literally just pop in for a cup of tea and to say hello. Um, whatever suits anybody, everybody's welcome. We run an equivalent group in Selby as well. That's on a Wednesday morning. And we are about to start one in Howden in the new year in the Shire Hall. We also have a family room, and this is a bit of a hangover from um, COVID. When we weren't able to support in families' homes or when we were just coming out of lockdown and families weren't yet confident about having other people in their homes and volunteers perhaps weren't confident about going into other people's homes, we set up a space called the family room where the volunteers and the families could still meet face to face, but knowing that they were in um, a, a safe space, really. It was a room we we cleaned and tidied and, and kept minimal contact with anybody else in it, really. So it was as safe as we could manage, really, um, during those times. So we've kept that on because it proved popular. Um, so possibly as well for... Um, any domestic abuse situations potentially it was it's sometimes easier for somebody to meet away from the family home and um, we also offer telephone and text support sometimes just a chat over the phone once a week for family is sufficient um, and then alongside all of that we do offer regular trips activities and holiday sessions craft sessions etc for families we raise money independently for the trips that we do. We go to places like Williams Den and Sundown Adventureland, and we invite whole families along to those, which always prove really popular. And for some families that we support, they, they very often tell us that they're the only trip or the only event or the only party they get to go to during school holidays. So they're really valued and they're, they're really useful and really nice to see. And that little picture there is some triplets and an extra one that we support. <laughs> Yeah. So next slide, please, Gemma. So for our referral process, we can take any family with a child under eight. Um, our uh, geographical area that we cover is uh, the goal of surrounding towns and villages. Um, so we generally go as far as at the moment up to Hum and Spalding Moor, Newport, and then across to Gould Snaithway. Um, but we're a, a, it's quite flexible. So it's basically we can work wherever we've got volunteers. Um, for referring to us, we take referrals from professionals, from families and friends, or they can self-refer themselves. Um, we do need permission, obviously, to do a, if I have a family referral, and it has to be a choice. They need to want our support. Um, we do have a referral form that we can send out to anyone, or we can just take tele telephone referrals. So if you've got a family that you think might need any support, you can just literally ring us. And as long as you've got uh, consent from the family, we can just take their details and we can call them up and arrange to see them. Okay, next slide. So at the moment, we're currently supporting uh, approximately 30 families. And we have roughly 15 to 20 families who regularly attend our group sessions. We've got 31 volunteers at the moment. We are constantly looking for more, obviously, like we all are, I'm sure. And um, we are running another training course starting late January. So that will be our, our next one. Um, and oh, rough, a rough approximation, we provided around 4,000 hours of support last year in total. Um, and what I've put at the bottom here, families, volunteers, trustees, what we really like to see, and we do see fairly often, are people coming back to us who received support as a family who want to come back to us to be a volunteer because they valued, they really valued what support they had when they were in need. And they want to give that, that bit back, as Gemma said right at the beginning, that's, that, that's a theme that runs through the voluntary sector, isn't it? Volunteers want to come back and give a bit of time and they're, they're invaluable, really. They make, they make great volunteers because they fully get it. They fully understand and, and they know how valuable it is. And then some volunteers, perhaps if they can't commit to the every week for a few hours, go on to be trustees. And we do, our treasurer at the moment is currently a past family, past home visiting volunteer, and is now 
trustee and treasurer for us, which is which is great. And we love that. It kind of proves to us in a, in a in an informal way that it it works. What we're doing works, which is always good to know, isn't it? So next one, please, Gemma. Thank you. Oh, this is literally just a picture of some happy times. These are just some of the trips and events and the gatherings and what have you that go on. I think there's the deep there and William's Den and Sundown Adventureland that everybody loves. So that's us, really. Thank you. And I'll just quickly stop sharing just to make sure I haven't missed anything in the chat. Does anybody have any questions for Susie and Sophie while they are on? Please pop them in the chat or just unmute yourself and ask them if you do ask any. Sorry, if you do have any. Just make sure I haven't missed anything in the chat. A contact number. They've just asked for a contact number. Do you mind popping that in there, either Sophie or Sue? Oh, you've done oh, it. There we are. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Beat me through it. Yeah, brilliant. So there's the telephone number. Thank you so much for that, uh, Susie and Sophie. Some really um, positive work there. Some really, and I think, like you said, it is that for somebody starting off in the, in that need of support, going on to then growing in confidence and skills and knowledge to then be able to become, you know, to take on a volunteer role and potentially a trustee. And, in you know, in some organisations, even a paid staff member role, that journey is just so important. So thank you so much for touching yes. on that as well. And, yeah, some incredible work there. And it is, and I think it's really important as well with yourselves that, the children benefit, obviously, from the work that you're doing, but also it is about them parents, isn't it? And and making sure that they are supported and they feel happy and their well-being is right. So, yeah, touching all around the ages there. Thank you. So I will share my screen again. Don't want that. One second. And we will move. To the hinge, if you don't mind unmuting yourself, Megan, give me a shout when you're there, and I will. Uh, I'll let you. I'll mute myself, and I'll let you speak. If you just let me know when you need me to, to uh, to change the slide for you. That's great. Thanks, Gemma. Um, good morning, everybody. I'm Megan Robinson, and I'm the operations manager at the Hinge Centre. Um, we're a local charity based in Bridlington. Um, we have two offices. Um, in Bridlington and the addresses the addresses are both on that um, slide there. Um, so our charity we aim to open doors of opportunity and we provide services and support to those within our local community of any age um, ranging from like birth into adulthood. Um, we have been in Bridlington since 2008 um, so we're quite a prominent sort of service within our local town so I'm ready for the next slide, I think, Gemma. So we have three projects that we run. Um, so I will just go through each one briefly. So we have a resettlement project. So we support people who are homeless or at risk of homelessness, whether that be um, from relationship breakdowns, family breakdowns, people who just find themselves in that situation um, for no fault of their own. So we can provide advice and information on steps that need to be taken initially. Um, when they find themselves um, in this situation. And that may be signposting them to the council to do homeless presentations, liaising with housing providers and the council um, and other landlords um, in regards to sort of the tenancies and timeframes around um, finding something more suitable um, and safe for them. We devise a property list on a fortnightly basis, which has um, details of private rented um, properties, different landlords and um, housing providers and we can email this out to everybody um, if they want to be on the mailing list. We can help people once they've established um, and managed to move into accommodation with setting up their household bills and direct debits. Sometimes it can be quite daunting for somebody if they you know, haven't lived independently before or if they've not been sort of in control of that before and 
knowing sort of where to start can be a little bit tricky for some people. So we can just help them sort of set up that pathway. We also um, help people with um, getting like white goods and essential furniture for the properties when they move in. Um, and we can do this by applying to like different grants and trust applications that are out there and that are available for people. We provide one-to-one tailored packages of support to meet areas of need. So once somebody um, is settled in their accommodation, it might be that they would like some sort of more support ongoing either with that tenancy or maybe in terms of like confidence building um, in regards to like healthy relationships. So we can build like a package of support to try and help them um, increase confidence or look at sort of those areas of, of need. Um, and I think I've already mentioned about like the ongoing support to help people maintain their tenancies. It can be quite difficult for people if they've not been, if it's the first tenancy or if they're not used to that or if they haven't been in control of that previously. So we wouldn't want them to, you know, be in a property and fail. Um, so we would always make sure that we can offer sort of one-to-one -one ongoing support. So I think the next slide, please. Um, so our second area of support is community. Quite a lot comes under our community um, project, really. So we have benefit and welfare support. So that ranges from applying for universal credit applications, personal independence payments, disability living allowance, those sort of applications, but then also to um, applications for the white goods, rent in advance um, and bond. Um, scheme payments we can support people with budgeting and debt management um, and that might be applying for um, grants and trust funds to help reduce um, sort of outgoings for people if they're finding themselves in difficulty we offer a range of community groups so we have a weekly schedule um, with our men's meet and eat independent living for adults with learning disabilities crafts for health and we've recently started running a couple of six week programs, um, which is the time for you and the budget cooking class. And it's the both of them are really an opportunity for people to come together, meet other people um, and sort of developing skills and confidence. The budget cooking class, especially, um, it's been a, a huge hit. Um, and the last intake did like five weeks worth of like fake aways. Um, so that was quite nice for them. Um, and then the, all of the reports since they've gone home and they've done that with the children. So you can see how like it's impacted. Um, we do run three food provisions. So we have emergency food parcels that um, are available for people who are in financial hardship. They might not have received their benefit payment, um, maybe unemployed or they've not received the wages. Anything sort of like on an emergency basis. We rely on donations for our emergency food parcel stock. Um, so we are quite lucky at the moment. We have got quite a lot of donations um, and it's it's quite um, well stocked. But we, we don't want people to come reliant on that um, just in case it comes to one, you know, one day when we don't have those donations available. I think the top photo here is our um, emergency food parcel stock. You can see we've got some shelves and we have got a few more shelves now. Um, with it all sort of stocked up. And then we have a community food store, which is um, like a little social supermarket model, really. Um, we pay a yearly subscription to Fair Share and receive food on a weekly basis. And then people can come to us every Friday and shop at the store. So um, items are like five for a pound, three for a pound, two for a pound. And it's allowing people, it sort of gives, that, gives people that independence and also that ability to help them with like the budgeting and sort of transitions them from food parcels um, across to the food store. And then we also have a Waste Not Wednesday, which was a new scheme that we started running in the summer. And that happened because we, were, we started to receive quite a lot of um, fresh food from Fair Share on a Wednesday. And it wasn't sort of lasted until the Friday until our community food store. So on a Wednesday, we put everything out for people to come and collect and they, it's a £2 donation and they can take as much as they like. And we have um, a little board where we, we write suggestions of what they could make from this week's Waste Not Wednesday products. 
We also offer employability support, so helping people to create CVs or cover letters, completing job application forms. We've recently launched um, like a little bit of a training program. So we've got a digital IT suite at our um, Crown Community Building. And we have had, um, I think there was 11 people over the last two weeks have been in and completed the level two food hygiene and the health and safety in the workplace. So we're able to provide some um, like training courses to help people um, build on the skill set and develop the CVs. Again, I've mentioned this in resettlement too. We do the personal development and um, one-to-one tailored support packages um, around sort of different topics. And then we also have volunteering opportunities. So volunteers can support with our community food store. Um, we have like reception, um, front of house duties, or we have different fundraising events that we run throughout the year, um, which volunteers can um, support with. Next slide, please, Gemma. <laughs> um, and then our final project is children, young people and families. So we provide children with new opportunities and experiences to help develop their confidence and skills. We run a range of after-school sessions, Monday to Friday. Um, and then we also provide holiday activities. So these are more larger scale trips um, and activities. We go to different local and national attractions, longest time scale sessions, some of the sort of well attended ones this summer, we had um, a sign language choir, which was really successful. We did um, tennis, we went to our local tennis courts in Bridlington and had um, some tennis sessions down there. Um, and then we also provide family activities as well. So we do brunch and bingo sessions or brunch and craft activities different excursions so this is the picture here is a trip at I think it was the Yorkshire Wildlife Park that one and that was last summer and then we also do another girls group on a Wednesday night and that's for girls aged 11 to 17 so it's a weekly group who meet and it's an opportunity for them to develop confidence build relationships and learn new skills each week is different so they might partake in some sport activities and um, then some craft activities, cooking activities, personal development um, activities. I think that was it. And then I've got a little video, I think that was my next slide, wasn't it? Oh, no, it wasn't. 2023 in numbers. So these were some numbers that I sent over to Gemma last week. Um, so I suppose in terms of like the community food store, which is at the bottom, you can see how it's sort of developed over the last few years. And in terms of how you know how many more people have started to come into our our community food store we do actually hold a session every friday now whereas before in 2021 we did just hold a, a fortnightly friday food store but since 2022 since we got our second um building we started doing it weekly so the attendances are a lot higher there um so you can see we've provided 854 emergency food parcels have been distributed so far, and that in total supported 1,035 adults, 672 children. So yeah, a few little statistics for you. And then I think we've got a little video to end on um, that we recently made, um, and it just sort of captures a little bit about what we do. Brilliant. I'm going to try and play this and just make sure everyone can hear it. Do apologise if one of my speakers is really crackly. It's just started then. <laughs> Typical. Just let me try and play it. Do I need to connect it with sound? Let's have a look. No. Make sure it's on. Share the sound. Right. I'll just make sure you can hear it. Can everybody hear that? Oh. Could you hear that, Megan? Yeah, I could hear it. It was maybe a little bit crackly, but I think it'll be okay, hopefully. It is crackly. I'll try and um, turn my sound down a little bit so it's not too crackly. That's fine. Just make sure the sound's sharing. Oh. Nope, it's not having it. Where has it gone? <laughs> 
No, I think it's a little bit delayed, maybe. Oh, it's disappeared on my end. One second. Let me try again. I'll just try and bring that up again. She has screen. It's there. Fingers crossed. I think it's just, yeah, I think it's just loading it. I'll wait till that thing stops spinning. I apologise about the crackle. If it does, I'll turn it down because there is some text. So hopefully you can still. I think it's just, I'll give it a minute. It's, um, it's spinning for me. Because it was a lengthy video. Just see if there's anything. I can share sound and mute myself. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Christine. All right, let me try. I wouldn't even play it then, but let me just try again. If not, I can, with permission, share the video. I think you're still muted, Gemma. Don't worry if it doesn't work. Right, I'll try one more time. It's just, it's, can you see it spinning on your end? I've just got like a circle spinning. I think it is trying. And the internet's fine. I'll try one more time. Apologies. If you do have any questions for Megan while she's here, and I'll just while I try and bring this up again, if you do, um, let me see if, if you do just pop them in the chat now or feel free to unmute yourselves and ask them. I will just try one more time to reload it and fingers crossed. It's worked all week that video as well. Mm -hmm. I could always try it on mine if you wanted me to. Yeah, do you want to try that side on your side? Mm. Should let you screen share, but if it doesn't tell me, um, share screen. Ooh, can you see my screen? Let me yes, just I think so. put slideshare. Well, how do I do? Slideshare. Um, and then from your slide. There we go. Let's see if it works. Just need to turn your sound on, I think, possibly. Do I need to be mute? Do I need to be unmuted? I can't hear the sound at the minute. Um, you just need to go to the three dots. Three dots. I think it's three dots. I've got mine up now. There we go. I think I've done it. You've done it. Brilliant. Thank you. Let's go. Operating since 2008, the Hinge Centre offers vital support and services to those facing social and financial deprivation. Having two sites... ...sites across Bridlington allows us to operate on a larger scale and we are more accessible to those within our community. We have three main projects, resettlement, community, and children, young people, and families. We do um, baking, um, crafts, having tea, family cooking, and going on trips. We have new members attending our community food store each week and figures show a 30% increase in attendances compared to last year already. So far this year, 
we have distributed 742 emergency food parcels which have helped 904 adults and 619 children. I've attended a time for you twice. Um, I've done things with the kids like cooking on a budget. Uh, we went to Whitney and we went to Yorkshire Wildlife Park as well with the Hinge. And how do you think overall that's benefited you and you and, and the family? Well, me and the kids really enjoyed the days out and without going with the Hinge we would probably wouldn't have been able to afford it. Um, so we've had some really good days out, which made memories with me, me and the kids. We aim to provide new opportunities for those attending our community groups and this allows a chance for individuals to build skills, increase confidence and develop friendships. No, it's a bit like family. That's what it's a bit, feels a bit like. This is the only contact I have with people at all throughout the week. Yeah. This is like my main, main day. It's so heartwarming to see the positive impact and difference that attending the Hinge has on people's lives. I looked like back on the records and it was July 2020. Well, I think we've got a really good grasp on that. Thank you so much, Megan. And, and if you're happy to, I can always share that video. I think because yeah, it's fine. I don't know what happened. Maybe because of the, the atom of below, yeah. doesn't it? So much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just um, just whilst I bring up the PowerPoint again, um, can you, you had a question there from Sophie, just saying the service sounds fabulous, Megan. Do you just cover the Bridlington area? Yeah, so we do cover Bridlington, but then surrounding areas. So we do have people who come to us from like Driffield and surrounding villages. We did used to have a site in Google going back um, like in 2008 time. I think it closed like 2011. Um, but yeah, it is just Bridlington and the surrounding areas. And me, I'm on mute. Any questions for Megan, please feel free to um, send them across and I will make sure that everybody's contact details, if you haven't already picked them up, are sent out with the email. I just want to, we was hoping to have Andrew Haynes. Are you here, Andrew? Not sure if you've been able to get on. If not, don't worry. I will just now share my... screen we was hoping to um i think he put a message on to say that he was on but then he had to leave to go to another meeting Perfect. Thank you, Megan. I think I missed that when I was presenting. That's absolutely fine. We're going to hopefully be able to um, share something from him on Age UK, which would be next. So I will make sure that we get that sent out to everybody who's attended. So oh, going too far. The, set, the next bit is about ourselves and the support that we offer and why it is so important. So we've seen just a few examples of um, a number of um, VCSE organisations that are providing safeguarding support across communities within the East Riding and wider areas. But it is absolutely essential that there's all these services out there that we work in collaboration because for me, as I mentioned earlier, that is where the magic happens. So some of the reasons why it's important to network in and collaborate. So firstly, it provides opportunities for social benefit and mutual support. The more you are able to engage with those who are either on the ground or working on the ground with communities, the more chances we've got of meeting need in the most appropriate way. You know, as, as services, we can often think that a, a person or a community needs X, Y and Z and, and actually they may still be needing A, B and C. So it's why it's so important for me that we actually know 
what we're doing is working and equally that we're what we're putting in support is actually wanted because if not you know you would potentially put a lot of time and effort and resource into something that never will get off the ground we also it also provides social and learning activities for those harder to reach and engage you know we can quite often come across the the um the phrase, oh, they're hard to engage, or they're not engaging with services, or various things we might see it worded. But for me, they will be engaging with somebody. And actually, it may be that there is a community group, or food bank, or peer support, or volunteer that is connecting with that person. And the more the more opportunities that we engage in this networking and collaborating collaborating and coming together the more chance we've got of identifying what you what or who per, what person sorry or what resource actually might be a way in to try and engage with a person or family it also provided opportunity for communities to campaign on important social issues you know we are able to provide a, a voice for people as organizations and by working in collaboration um, we can ensure that that voice is heard we can help improve and inform services, you know, you know, all the, right across the different strategic boards at the minute, there's this real emphasis on engaging and listening and informing services. And for so many VCSE organisations, they, they're hearing what needs to be said every single day. So engaging with them, you will hear what, you know, those in those communities are actually thinking, saying and doing provides activities and services by the people for the people again it links into making sure that in, that services or resources or projects are doing what they intend to do and that they're being received in the right way and ultimately we can work towards shared solutions that benefit all i chose a little uh, quote there uh, quote building capacity dissolves difference it irons out inequalities and i just thought it was really nice there um, by working together we and we pull together that capacity, we can sort of try and jump the barriers that sometimes prevent people from having a voice and a say in, in what they want from services. So VCXC sector safeguarding and domestic abuse training. So for those who are on the session who are part of a VCSE organisation, um, Community Vision, which is part of the organisation I am part of, um, do provide that safeguarding and domestic abuse training and support. So as it says there, we'll work in partnership with East Riding of Yorkshire Council to and the Safeguarding Children Partnership and East Riding Safeguarding Adults Boards to offer training and support to all VCSE um, groups and organisations, including the faith sector. We work right across the spectrum from children and young people to vulnerable adults as well. And we do that in order to try and support organisations to, to truly be able to tackle any safeguarding issues. So some of the support we offer is safeguarding and other policies and procedures. We offer a um, policy toolkit as part of our website. So we have a keeping people safe section and underneath that you'll see the policy toolkit. It has downloadable policies on it where you can literally download them and personalize them to your organization's needs and telephone numbers. We offer a disclosure and barring service and support their people to undertake them checks. We offer training both in um, safeguarding and domestic abuse, and we are able to come and deliver that in-house within organisations. We support organisations to tackle with any safeguarding issues, so maybe where there's been any allegations or disclosures, um, we can help them support that through that. What can be complicated safeguarding or domestic abuse situation, um, particularly if you have to involve other organisations such as a ladder, local authority designated officer. The domestic abuse training and support package we offer um, is, is, is called the DAPS for short, which is Domestic Abuse Practitioner Standards. It's delivered in three levels. Level one is for anybody who has a public facing role. So if, for the, if your staff or volunteers come into contact with um, the general public, um, 
we can essentially look at whether there is a need there to come and deliver that training with you. And then the level two progresses from that to, to kind of provide that additional um, training around those who are actually working on a one-to-one -one with people who potentially are impacted by domestic abuse. And it's aimed at looking at what questions to ask and what actions need to be taken for any of those um safeguarding or domestic abuse i've popped my details on the next slide and um, so please feel free to get in touch with me and um if there's anything in relation to safeguarding or domestic abuse that your organization needs or would like any support with and then just i will stop um sharing there just to see if there is any questions that are all from anybody one minute um, if there's anything in the chat or if anybody feels that they would like to unmute themselves and ask any questions about any of the organisations or the services today that we've spoken about. No, do tell me if I do miss anything. But if not, um, and if that's answered all of your questions, it's a huge thank you to from me for everybody being part of today. Thank you to everybody that's spoken today about their organisations. Thank you for everyone who's attended. We will be making sure that this session is placed on our YouTube channel under Community Vision. So if you feel that staff members, team members, volunteers, any of your you know, those who are part of your organisations would benefit about hearing about the Hinge or Homestart um, or the Alzheimer's Society, please feel free to link them with this. It'll take me a couple of days, but I will get it on there. Um, and please share it with your teams. If not, have a lovely day. Thank you for attending. And I will stay online just to see if anybody wants to chat at the end. But if not, thank you all. Thanks, Gemma. Thank you. Thank you, much. Megan. Cheers. Thank you and see you all later. Mm -hmm.